Hey everyone, uh, your TA here, and just making sure that we're going over another example of constructive induction, uh, because this can be really helpful, and I know that a lot of people had trouble with this one, so I'm going to go over a classic example today, all right? And this is actually going to be the quick sort worst case from occurrence. If you're not familiar with that, don't worry, you will be in 351, um, but let's get on with it now. So basically what it is, is it's very something similar to what you've seen in class, right? So you have this recurrence, it's defined like this, you have this function t of n, right? And uh, if n is 1, then it's going to give you a 0. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, defined recursively of t of n minus 1 plus n minus 1, all right? Okay. Uh, and what we're going to try and guess is that the result uh, of this recursive uh, function over here is going to be equal to something in the form a n squared plus b n plus c, okay? And that's our guess, and we're going to try and find the values of a, b, and c, okay? So here's how we get started. So we get started any other, any other inductive proof. Any inductive proof starts with the first step, which is the inductive base, right? So um, we're going to start with the inductive base, right? So what are we looking at here, right? We have a right-hand side and we have a left-hand side. So first we're going to plug in 1 into the recurrence. And when you plug in 1 to the recurrence, t of 1 is going to be equal to 0, right? For the left-hand side, t of 1 is 0, right? Simple enough, okay? So now we're going to try and do the right-hand side. So when n is 1, right, oh, when n is 1, that means that each of these terms, right, they, one times a uh, constant is going to be the constant, right? So that means that the right-hand side is going to be equal to a times 1. Sorry, this is an a, not a 9. a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c, right? So setting the left-hand side and the right-hand side equal, because, again, we're doing an inductive proof and we're trying to prove that the inductive base holds, um, we're going to find this relationship that's going to help us earlier, which is going to be a plus b plus c is equal to zero. Okay? So keep in mind that this is constructive induction, right? So we're not going to get any sort of, of proof just yet. We're trying to get, uh, we're trying to assume that this guess is correct, and we're going to try and prove that by finding values for a, b, and c. So even though there's nothing to prove that your inductive base holds up just yet, we're going to use it in a bit. So sit tight. Okay, so this is the first step, right? We're going to do our inductive base, all right? So now we're going to move on to the inductive hypothesis, okay? So go on, I'm going to erase all of this, and I'm going to keep on this side important equations, okay? So that equation we found for the base case, very important, all right? Now we're going to move on to the inductive hypothesis, okay? So the inductive hypothesis for this one, we're gonna try and do it for n minus one. It's gonna make our lives a lot easier. So we're gonna assume that t of n minus one um, holds, okay? And what that means is that uh, we're gonna assume that t of n minus one holds and kind of set that equal to our guess, right? So we're going to assume that t of n minus 1 is equal to a of n minus 1 squared plus b of n minus 1 plus c, okay? We're going to assume this property to be true, okay? And then we're going to use this fact when we're doing this step, okay? So let me do a little bit. Let me keep this up for a little bit, and then I'll erase it if I need more space, right? So we're going to go ahead and start our inductive step. Uh, and so the way that we're going to do that is, first of all, we know that t of n such that uh, when n is greater than or equal to 1, right? So n is greater than or equal to, to 2 over here. So when this, I guess, will be n is greater than or equal to 2, right? Because we're defining for n minus 1, and we're trying to solve for t of n. So, um, uh, when t of n, we're trying to prove that t of n uh, holds, and so we're going to set t of n equal to, um, we're going to set t of n equal to the same thing as t of n minus 1 plus n minus 
one like that, right? We recursively defined it over here, so we're going to set by recursive definition, right? Uh, and now that we have that, we can actually use our inductive hypothesis uh, to go ahead and solve this problem, right? So we're going to first, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to plug it in from earlier, right? We know that this statement over here is equal to a of n minus 1 squared plus b of n minus 1 plus c, because we're assuming that original inductive hypothesis, right? Uh, and then don't forget, we still have this plus n minus 1 on the outside. Don't forget about that. So now what are we going to do, right? So now it's actually the easy part. We're going to simplify, and we're going to try and get it in that original form, okay? So uh, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do the algebra out so I can combine some like terms so I can get it in that quadratic form, okay? Um, so give me a second. Let me erase this now that we got that. Handled. Okay. Um, and I'm going to write where we left off up here. And I'm going to continue to work. So this is where we last left off in our inductive step. Now we're going to go and do some simplifying, OK? So first off, we're going to expand this, right? And that's going to be equal to n squared, uh, what is this, minus 2n plus 1, right? Plus b of n minus b plus c plus n minus 1. Uh, and then uh, what we're going to try and do um, is we're going to try and group it so that we get it in that original quadratic kind of form, right? Uh, and the way that we're going to actually do that um, is that we're going to take all those terms, all those terms, and group them together properly, okay? So check this out. So we're going to multiply this out like this. So now we have all the terms enumerated. So now we can start grouping to get it to look more like, more like our guess value, okay? Uh, and what we're trying to go for, remember, is this guess value over here. We're trying to get it in that form where n is, uh, can be any sort of uh, integer that we please, okay? So what we're going to do now uh, is we're going to move on and group them like so, right? Uh, we want to group the terms, so then after that we're going to take out an n over here. Yeah, we're going to take out an n. Um, and we're going to set that equal to this. We're going to combine the like terms with all the n's, right? So we have it in this form. So this is the coefficient here plus whatever's remaining, right? Which in this case um, is going to be, uh, or whatever's remaining is going to be a c, a b, a 1, and the plus a, right? So it's going to be, I think, c minus b minus 1 plus a. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah, I think that's correct. Okay. Um, and so basically now that we have that, um, we have that handled, we have that all together, uh, we're going to try and figure out what we can do um, in our next steps here to get these equations out so we can find the coefficients of these values, right? So um, First of all, we know something uh, very interesting about um, we know something very interesting about this um, function, right? Now that we put it in this terms, that you can see the similarities between it and its guess value here. So you can actually set those terms equal to the constants that we're trying to solve, right? So for example, we have a over here, right, and a over here. Okay? which is going to give us the relatively obvious but somewhat helpful um, equation that a is equal to a, right? It has to be, if our guess is correct, right? Now, moving forward, we want to set this whole term equal to b, right? Because that's the coefficient over here. So we're going to set that whole term, um, which is going to be minus 2a plus b plus 1 equal to b, right? 
And finally, we know that this constant term, c, has to be the same thing as c minus b minus 1 plus a. Remember, all of these terms are constants, right? They're not variables. We're trying to find the solution to these constants, right? So that means that c minus b minus 1 plus a is equal to c, OK? Now, you'll notice uh, that these equations are actually going to be really helpful. We can actually use them to our advantage uh, and figure out exactly what our constants are going to be. Uh, including using this equation we got from our inductive base from earlier. Okay, so now, first of all, uh, what's something you notice? There's a term over here we can take out the b, right? Um, and what's going forward there uh, is that if you take this equation, so let's take a look at this equation, right? If you uh, subtract the b from both sides, you're going to get negative 2a plus 1 is equal to 0, right? which means that a is going to be equal to 1 half. OK? Perfect. So we got a. We know, we know that a is equal to 1 half. OK? Uh, now that we have the a, we can go ahead and solve. So um, we have an a, and why don't we solve for b now, now that we have a, right? So now that we have a, we're going to plug this value back into the original equation, right? And we're going to have 1 minus 2 times 1 half plus b plus 1 equal to b. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Okay, actually, it's probably, uh, well, I guess you could solve for this, right? No, you can't. You can't solve for this. All right, um, we're going to plug the a uh, into the second equation here because that's actually going to be what's useful. Um, so we're going to uh, use this second equation here which if we use this one here and we use the fact that we know a, we know that it's going to be equal to negative b minus 1 plus a is equal to 0, right, because the c's cancel. Um, and we already know that a is 1 half, so that means negative b minus 1 plus 1 half is equal to 0, which means b has to be able to be equal to negative 1 half, right? Fantastic. So now we found these two constants over here. You're probably wondering, how are we going to get c, right? Well, remember that important equation from earlier? Now it's actually helpful. We have our negative 1 half. We have our 1 half. So if we go ahead and plug in our negative 1 half and 1 half to this equation plus c equals 0, we get that c is equal to 0. OK? So now. We found all our constants, right, using these equations that we found, using constructive induction, figuring out the step. And now uh, we're good to go. So we can plug those back into our original guess, and we've solved it. All right? Let me know if you guys have any questions. Feel free to reply in this email. Uh, if you guys still don't get it, no problems. Bring a problem up on Wednesday when we do our final review, uh, and I will be happy to talk through with you. That's all for now.